Yeah, it's great to be back. Um, you know, it's a wonderful golf course, great history in the club and the in the golf course, obviously, with all those great players winning back in the day. And for us to come back here on this classic design is, is really a treat. Um, it's my third time here, and I must say that the golf course is the best I've seen it in the three, the, my third time here. So um, the greens are rolling beautiful, uh, they're holding, so I'm expecting good scoring especially with the nice weather uh, that's predicted. What, what have you learned about the golf course in your two previous visits that you can put into practice to get a soft finish here? You know, if you get the ball in play off the tee, you can you can get going around here. Um, the greens are so pure, uh, especially this week, and them holding. If you can come out of the fairways, you can, uh, you can, you can get scoring. Um, par threes are excellent, very strong uh, par three holes. Um, it's very undulating. Some of the some of the par fours. So you gotta um, have your wits with you. You know, getting your yardage is right. But if you're hitting the ball properly, this golf is gonna, golf course is gonna uh, you know give you some good scores. Got to win early in the season. How would you kind of assess your form coming into this week? Yeah, I had a win in March. Um, I've had a, quite a few top tens. Um, you know, I played well in some of the majors. Um, you know, in Akron, I finished, I think, third. I finished second in uh, Birmingham. But, yeah, I'm looking for wins. So, <laughs> um, you know, not, not too many wins coming my way. But um, I've put myself in position. Uh, but I'm looking for a strong finish uh, this end of the year stretch. I think we got eight events. So, it's great to come back here and, and keep going. How about the galleries and the crowd? Wonderful crowds. St. Louis, what a wonderful crowds. I mean, I remember playing back in 1992, played with Arnold Palmer, the PGA at Bell Reef. And I remember, I mean, obviously playing with Arnold, you know, the king, you know, they were seven, eight deep, you know, and some of the biggest crowds I ever played in front of in 92. And it's just a great sporting town. People love their golf. Um, even today in the pro there are a lot of people that came out. So it's really nice to play golf here. How's your health? I'm struggling a little with a rib um, on the left side. I did a lot of traveling um, in my five weeks off. You know, I went to South Africa, see the family and England, uh, flew to Seattle back. So a lot of traveling. So I think, you know, kind of took its toll on my body a little bit, but I'm, I'm getting better. It's it's 100 percent better from yesterday. I couldn't play yesterday, but it's, I'll be good to go tomorrow. Conversations go on on the walkie-talkies or headsets during Ryder Cup or President's Cup. Uh, you know, from a lighthearted standpoint, not, not looking for secrets or anything like that. Mark, should we tell him? <laughs> Mark's been on my our team for many, many years, and um, it's everything from very lighthearted to very intense <laughs> stuff going on, depending on where you are in the matches. Um, a lot of organizational stuff going on, um, especially for management, you know, uh, you know, uh, a management telling you where you have to be at certain times of the day, especially to a captain, um, to the vice captains, you know, it's, it's, it's strategy and making sure that the players stay on with their strategy that we uh, planned. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of uh, language is actually the funniest thing of us all. Because on my team, you know, we got seven, sometimes seven different nationalities. And I remember KJ was on our vice captaincy and I had to have a, a person actually, you know, KJ's speaking to me, but then I have a person telling me what KJ's telling, <laughs> actually trying to tell me because his English is a little funny. But um, yeah, there's a lot of, lot of different stuff that, that goes on. Yeah. War on the subject. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're always going to get criticized. I mean, I was when, you know, I had to make my selections. Uh, you're going to leave somebody out, and it's almost obvious, but there's always a plan behind why you're making certain decisions. Um, it's really got to do with pairing and, you know, just the whole team concept. And um, as long as players don't take it personally, um, that'll be good, but it's hard players not to sometimes take it personally because you give your whole life 
to playing Ryder Cup or President's Cup and then you get left out. So it's it's very hard on the player, harder on the player to get left out, but it's as hard on the captain because you got to ultimately live and, by, live and die by your decision. Aaron, when you were a young man on tour and develop, still developing your game, from a practice standpoint, if you broke it down among on the course, on the range, short game, how would those percentages have broken down and how much has that changed now that technology has become a big part of that process? Yeah. Good question. I mean, I felt like I was a bit of a range rat a away from tournaments. At tournament sites, I didn't really, you know, put all those hours into on, on the range. I basically did all my work before I get to tournaments with David Ledbetter, especially. Especially when we lived in Orlando and David being in Orlando, I was out there. If I had a week off, I would be there five days out of the five, you know, of the weekdays. So, um, a lot of work there on the range. My short game was always pretty sharp, um, and I think I was just gifted with that kind of ability. But I, I did spend a lot of time on on the short game. Putting was always kind of there. Now it's kind of flipped around a bit. Um, you know, I spend a lot more time around the greens and on the greens, and a little bit less time on the range, just because of the body. Body's a little different now. What about the technology? Technology very different now. I mean. In those days, we didn't get all the help from technology, um, and the game was different. We didn't have to go after the ball as hard. Now it seems like everybody's going at it 100%. I always felt like I played 85% just to keep the ball in play. It was long enough to be able to do that. Now things have changed. Now you've got to go 110% on the driver, and I think the body will break down even, even quicker now, even with how strong the guys are. The body's not built for hitting a driver at 125, 130 miles per hour.